So I guess I'll start yeah. by give, I start by giving up my position. Okay, uh, Bubblegum, present yourself. We are live. So uh, as for now, no one is watching us, so don't worry about it. But uh, tell me who you are, what's your position, anything. Uh, present your uh, case. I'm here. Oh, okay, I'm a. Oh, sorry. I'm a. Yeah, I'm a. I'm a random YouTuber, and um, I'm a creationist. In my position, you know, I'm a, called, I hold the creationist position, but not like the Christian creationist. I'm a. I'm a hardline creationist. So I would say there is fixed species, not a. Uh, not these kind species. Yeah, I know. Uh, explain yourself a little bit better for our audi audience, there is someone watching, so explain yourself a little bit better. Okay. What's a kind and why you think uh, it's not the case? And then if you want to present something, I will uh, let you share your screen, uh, do whatever you want, and then maybe I will give you a response if it's okay with you. Yeah, out of, of all positions, uh, what, what separates me from the um, Christian creationists, what they, what Christian creationists and evolutionists would both agree, like uh, there's at least some amount of uh, common ancestry among species, while Christians might not go that far to say uh, bananas and whales are related, they would say wolves and dogs are related. And my, my position is none, none of those, I would say, uh, a Dalmatian can only give birth to a Dalmatian, and there is no wolf ancestor relation there. Yes, I do know that, but uh, so you have some material to show, video or some kind of papers, whatever you want, to show your uh, line of thought, uh, what you are thinking why you think it's true, and so on and so forth. First of all, uh, I will call you Bubblegum. Uh, it's OK with you. Uh, you want to use another name and a nickname. You want to tell me your name uh, as you prefer. Uh, anything is all right, Bubblegum, Bubble. OK, or... Bubble. I like it. Uh, you can call me Luca. Uh, don't worry about it. So, yeah, uh, what kind of evidence you want to show us tonight? Well, it, um, it's more of a it's, a, it's a bit of internal critique of evolution that I do. And because this critique also applies both ways to Christians and uh, evolutionists. So I think since evolutionists would say that there is at least one ancestor between the Dalmatian and this wolf ancestor. And so my criteria for like evidence for evolution would be, give me in specific, what is that in between the Dalmatian and the wolf? And in, in, in much research, it turns out it doesn't exist. And this could be applied to every single uh, pure breed dog or pure breed animal. And again and again and again, we find there is no intermediate. So this is, this is a defeater for evolution. So it's, it's, it's a defeater argument. Mm. Can I, I ask you, uh, if you want, uh, why you think so? So uh, if I ask you to provide evidence for this position, and later I will provide you with some evidence for what I say afterwards. But uh, if you want to um, find evidence, what's your uh, modus operandi, uh, if you know what I mean. Uh, what you do when you do your research. I'm very interested in that. Uh, also, I'm very interested in you, uh, like what you do in your life. Of course, if you want to share, I will not force you. But uh, I'm very interested in your background. Uh, how you work when you try to find that evidence and 
things like that. Uh, really interested in that. So if you want to share, I'm here. Well, I, I, I don't have any professional background, so I don't have a PhD. <laughs> I come up front and do that. So neither, I, neither do I. As you know, I just have a degree in chemistry, so we are not talking about uh, doctors or things like that. Um, don't worry about it. Uh, I was just curious. Uh, you can have your opinion. Uh, you do not need uh, to be a professional to read the papers. Uh, of course, it's important to understand what is the level of um, the starting point uh, of your, um, uh, I won't say opponent because we are just discussing. So uh, the starting point of the person you are discussing with, uh, because when I share, when I uh, explain things, I need to know uh, who I'm uh, explaining those things too. Uh, as you know, I am uh, I work as a teacher, uh, so with a child, it's not like you can uh, discuss uh, evolution at some level. You need to simplify your uh, points. Uh, so I was asking for that. Uh, it's not like you are a doctor, so uh, I will listen to you or I will not if you are not a doctor. I'm not a doctor either. So I was just uh, asking for a better, a better understanding of uh, your oh, okay. I get you. the topic. Yeah, I get you. No, yeah, I, I just do like independent research, like because I, I barely get time for this because I'm basically I'm it seems I'm I'm the only person currently in the debate field that holds this position. So I had mm -hmm. to do my basically my own arguments, my own research. There's nobody <laughs> there's nobody yes. besides me. Well, uh, it's not a problem to have uh, an hypothesis. Uh but okay, you are the only one. You say you are you have not much time, uh, but when you do some research, where you will go? Uh, well, through, I, yes. I, do, I do see a lot of my stuff from the Christian creationists, but mm -hmm. I, I mean, we're, we're, we're all making hypotheses based on the same observations and we get different conclusions. I think even evolutionists look at the same uh, data, right? I would say. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so you do observation uh, live. Well, uh, science is done uh, with observation. Of course, experiments are really important to try to disprove uh, your uh, hypothesis. And if you cannot disprove something, uh, you want to assume that's true uh, until proven otherwise, of course. So uh, we are talking about dog breeds, uh, Dalmatians. Uh, I believe it's your strong, uh, stronger point. Uh, I did some research uh, on that uh, today. Uh, I want to be honest with you. I did not have much time uh, before this the, this discussion. I was saying debate, but we are not here with the moderator, so it's not a debate. Uh, so um, I did some research and I have some uh, material to share and to show to you, but uh, I was willing to let you uh, show uh, anything you want to show first, um, even a video or if you want to link a video uh, for me to share with everyone, uh, please do. And then I will start to give my points. Uh, I want to be sure that you have explained your position uh, in the most uh, beautiful and complete way possible, basically. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I will have a, a video later uh, hmm. to, to drive my, my, my main point that domination is don't have this intermediate between a wolf and the Dalmatians. So, which is necessary, because if this, this doesn't exist, this is a defeat of revolution, because they need to provide one. Yeah. 
Sorry, uh, I'm uh, responding to a person in chat, but uh, you want to share this video now? Yeah, we, we can, we can, I can give you the link. Okay, sure, that way. Please uh, share the link uh, if you want to. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. We don't have to watch the whole entire thing. We don't have to watch like the no, first no, no. Three uh, we will share the screen and then uh, we will. Uh... Okay, there is a. Sorry. Okay. Good, good. We are ready, I think. Okay. Give me a second. Okay, sure. Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, you can see my screen now? Yeah. Okay. I will uh, start the video. Uh, tell me when you want me to stop. Oh, from the beginning. I, 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 ah, I didn't from the beginning. According to the... Okay. Let's deal with the Dalmatians, these beautifully spotted dogs who, through the 101 Dalmatians movies, spent a little time in every dog lover's home for a while and, partly because of this, many people were also thinking about buying a Dalmatian puppy. If you go beyond the Walt Disney stereotypes and ask an average person interested in dogs about Dalmatians, you discover that there is usually very little real knowledge about this breed, and most of them come from echo. Hollywood movies. Therefore, okay. we have made a two-part... You want me to stop there? Oh, no, Sam, we'll get an echo. Ah, okay. Uh, maybe that's me. I will... ...part film about the Dalmatians, the first part of which will be about their history, which, let's tell you in advance, is quite special and mysterious, and then, in the second part, we will deal with their character and behavior. Let us begin with where the Dalmatians came from and what they were used for in their history. Until the advent of modern genetic examinations, there were several parallel theories about the formation of these dogs and, of course, about where the name, Dalmatian, came from. For a long time, the most popular and well-known of these theories was the one that derived the name Dalmatian from the name of Dalmatia province of Croatia, where from the 18th century sources appeared in which the Dalmatians appeared. Sinologists also guessed that the creation of these dogs would have been shaped by Roma people living and wandering in these areas. Today, in the light of new research findings, this theory has become the least likely, and modern Sinology has gone beyond these ideas. Others, referring to the Dalmatians' hunting past, derive their name from the French word Damachian, which is fallow deer in English, while another team of experts traced the name back to a 16th-century Serbian poet, Yuri Damotin, who mentioned these dogs several times. According to the most common theory, which is primarily held in Western Europe, the origin of the Dalmatians was traced back to Harlequin Great Dane and their genes, despite the fact that while there is a match in color between the two breeds, but on the white background there are no similarities in the forms of black spots and dots. In the world of beautiful theories and beliefs, DNA testing, which has become more widespread since the 1990s, proved decisive, leading to quite surprising results. 
As early as the 2000s, the International Institute for Human Genome Research conducted genetic comparisons of most dog breeds known today and published a map of the genetic kinship between dog breeds in graphs. Studies have revealed two very important things about Dalmatians. The first is that in addition to the fact that they are both dogs, there is no detectable genetic match between Harlequin Great Danes and Dalmatians. Second, which was and still is a real sensation, the Dalmatians do not show any genetic affinity with any of the so-called modern dog breeds known today, even with the retrievers among whom they have been officially classified. As one researcher remarked, Dalmatians are so deferent that it might be that they're really cats, in quotes of course. In the case of other dog breeds, I think you saw there. that clarify a lot of... Uh, that pretty, pretty much sums up the point I'm trying to make. Oh, you're a mute. You're, you're a mute, Luca. They'll still mute it. Sorry. Uh, we are still back. We are back. Sorry, I was talking. I just forgot uh, about <laughs> muting myself. So uh, that's your point. Good, good. I'm happy uh, to see that. So I did some research uh, about this topic. Of course, um, I can I ask you, apart from this video, you have any other source or not? Well, the, for this particular dog, it's the, this is the only source. But I can I can take the same logic and apply it to every single pure breed dog, and mm -hmm. and I, and we keep getting this. N there is no transition. There is no transition, and so we can only conclude evolution is false from that from that information. Okay, good, good. Uh, we have Titan Uranus here. Nice to be here. Uh, oh, cool. To see you Tiny. here. So, hello cool there. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I I actually have uh, some material to share, uh, if you are ready, of course. Uh, yeah, go, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, I did my research. Uh, I will explain to you first how I did it. Um, I usually start with uh, Google Scholar. Uh, you know what it is, uh, how that does work? Uh, Google Scholar, I'm not sure what that is in reference to. Mm. Um, it's basically Google for uh, scientific papers uh, because it was quite hard to find uh, a phylogenetic tree to dogs because dogs are uh, a species so they are not isolated uh, it's quite hard to find uh, difference between breeds because they can interbreed of course uh, they are still the same species it's not that easy to uh, get a phylogenetic tree of dogs but i managed to do it so, uh, and it's quite funny because it's a, a paper from Italy too. Mm. Uh, it was not on purpose. <laughs> so, okay. No. Okay. Okay, I share my entire screen for this uh, because I have at least a couple of things that I want to show you. Uh, first of all, uh, well, let's start with this book. Uh, it's quite a, an extensive one and you can see uh, a lot of papers in this book. It's an entire book. You can find it online. Uh, here you can see Google Scholar. It's not normal Google. And here you can see how they did trace uh, modern dog to other species. 
as you see there uh, you can see here they traces uh, dogs with uh, other species so it's a quite uh, big uh, tree there uh, yeah this is sander village tree to cats too so, uh, <laughs> sorry oh yeah the sander evolutionary tree yes but uh, i think that uh, even uh, norman creationists will not uh, accept anything like that but i need to share that uh, as you see you can trace the dog uh, inside this um, cluster of species uh, displayed so as you can see domestic dog is uh, most uh, related with uh, the gray wolf uh, coyote is a little bit further and then you have things like jackals jackals are an out group uh, it's quite interesting because they are considered dogs but they are less related than gray wolf and the mastiff dog it's quite a very interesting thing and this kind of thing will be um said even in the more specific paper so uh here you can find a lot of things about uh, dog ancestry and genetics do trace dogs with those pieces and we are also talking about uh, very whole papers if i remember correctly uh these yeah, not very old, uh, a decade or so old. Uh, I was thinking about uh, less recent years, but we can see here a citation about, a uh, quotation about uh, papers uh, of uh, 2010, so it's not that old. But this was the more generic paper. I did find one uh, more specific. Uh, you were asking about uh, Dalmatians. Uh, so these studies uh, talk about uh, dogs and modern Italian uh, dog population to be precise. And it's tracing our population uh, with other dogs. So here you can see all uh, the breeds uh, inside uh, and you can see even their uh, use use basically uh, if they is a companion dog or a pointer or things like that uh, we have quite a few and here they you can see there the various breed of dogs uh, in this paper so the most important thing in this paper is this image and i did uh, save this image uh, because it was too little uh, it was hard to read there so i did save the image and here uh, bubblegum you can see uh, all the relation between all uh, breeds of dogs in existence to be clear here you have wolf and i will show you the dalmatians so we start with wolfes as you see there yep. wolf golden jackal golden jackals are their real strange ones but they are still related to this tree even so they are less related than any other dog breeds in existence and then you see the dalmatian it's not uh, very close to the great dane it's more uh, closely related to uh, irish water spaniel uh, coated retriever and uh, springer spaniel Cavalier King, it's close to the Cavalier King. It's quite a fascinating thing. 
So uh, if you want uh, to discuss these kind of things, I will uh, interrupt my share of the screen uh, as for now. No, I think we should keep it up. So okay. help, help, it helps to provide a visual guide. So for example, um, in, in, for, in this image, uh, oh, can, yes. we zoom, can we zoom into the Dalmatians? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm sharing the screen, so uh, sorry. I okay okay so, so yeah so yeah it's, it's, uh, I want you to notice how how it just goes from like a wolf and there is nothing in between the wolf and the Dalmatian you, you notice the intersections right the intersections are not named and you are yes because you don't. Uh, see uh, those intersection when that's, you, that's the thing uh, that, that's that's the point exactly but we the, the intersections uh, would the intersections would be the intermediates and so these intermediates don't really exist they're just stipulated to exist but never demonstrated to exist those Which are you, uh analysis of dna it's the same of the doing a dna test with a human it's not like they do not exist. We, of course, cannot have a DNA test for every dog in existence in the last uh, two, three thousand years. The intersection are there. This uh, line is connected to here. Yeah, but how is it connected? Is it just is it just connected through an abstract, or is it connected through a real fossil we can find in That's the ground? Uh, genetic data. Uh, we are doing. Uh, they are doing, of course, I'm not uh, related to that. Uh, they are doing uh, genetic tests to dogs, and they are looking at connection between dog breeds. And if those relations are not there, how you can get this graph from that? That's the thing. These connections don't exist in the real world. These are just stipulated. These are just abstractions. It's a gap. It, it's, it's it's just an empty gap that stipulated exists. So like, where is this fossil in the ground? Because if this ancestors did exist, this, uh, this intermediate did exist, we should be able to find it at least in fossil, if not living, and trace it through genetics. But it's it's never shown anywhere. <laughs> and and, so, it, and uh, it, you want to say you want uh, from me uh, if I understand correctly, an example of a breed. Uh, originating in uh, basically in a time uh, so close that I can show you uh, the actual transition from a breed to breed. Well, not, not even a transition of breed to breed, at least a fossil would be sufficient. Mm. But, uh, but you are telling me that no breed is re related to dogs. And at this point, you are telling me that uh, you uh, don't believe that um, DNA tests are um, actually uh, correlating uh, living things, uh, and to some degree, it must be true because we are using those tests. Well, so that's the, well, that's the thing. When, when we do do the DNA test, it shows they're not ancestrally related. Sure, they have a, a relation that they're similar. But they're not ancestry related, and that's that they need to be ancestry related for them to con for then you to conclude this dog came from this dog and then this dog. You are telling me that with a DNA test you cannot find that someone is or is not your father or your close relative. But we can find our our relatives. Yeah, I came from my mom. In the same way, a Dalmatian dog came from a Dalmatian dad, but at what point does does a Dalmatian come from like a non-Dalmatian wolf-like ancestor, an intermediate between a wolf and a Dalmatian? You can see, of course, those are not father and son, but they are like distant cousins, and you can see how much close uh, some breeds are to others. And of course, it's not that simple because breeds are composed by uh, creatures that can still interbreed. It's not like that breeds are isolated 
like species and even the gray wolf can uh, bring forth uh, using your terminology so it just well, well it, even though they can interbreed doesn't mean they're they are same in origin for example lions and tigers can interbreed but when they do interbreed the, their children are, are infertile so we can con safely conclude that they don't share a common ancestor so while mm -hmm. evolution might imply that they're they the doesn't really back up their position as a as a definitive okay bubble gum can, can you get uh okay you do not uh, think that kinds are a thing right no no okay so just to be curious uh on the noah's uh arc how many animals were there mm, okay i think the christians got this whole noah's arc story wrong Mm -hmm. I think, I think their interpretation of the Bible is incorrect. When 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 the Bible says two of each kind, but then it says clean animals, so that's being very specific. So he's probably talking about farm animals, so they can they can sustain the trip. Not not the entirety of all animals, because there's, there's clearly no dinosaurs in the ark. Else we would see at least some sort of a dinosaur-like ancestor. Okay, so in your um, in your hypothesis, how uh, did animals survive uh, to the flood? They no, they didn't. It's clearly meant to wipe out the last creation and start anew. So uh, your position is that uh, God just recreated everything from uh, basically. Uh, well, it's. Well, a new creation because we don't we don't see lions in the fossil record, right? You can agree with that. There's no zebras. No. Yeah, we do have uh, at least partially uh, fossilized lions. I think you will find them uh, absolutely, and you will find a lot of uh, different species. Uh, but we don't maybe, not fossil because uh, if you are under some thousand of years old you will find remains that they are uh, not fossilized or just partially uh, Mineral. I, so uh, I, I think we find them mineralized but not fossilized i think because we, we, yeah, we don't uh depends because we do have uh, quite some uh different species and they go all the way uh, well, well, the, well, the so, point is, well, the point is, we don't see them along along with mammoths. Well, the, the modern line. Well, of course. Uh, well, mammoths we were alive to quite some re uh, recent years. Uh, I think I cannot remember yeah. exactly about, about date, six, but they were around quite uh, a long time. And funny a lot that humans. Humans were around, of course, uh, but the last mammoths uh, died not so long ago. Yeah, it's funny. Around six thousand years ago, they say, <laughs> which kind of does match up with Christian. I, I do not think that was uh, six thousand years ago. Around uh, there, what a different yeah. date. Uh, I cannot remember, and I can look into it. But I want to show you a thing. So. I knew uh, from my, it was just a curious thing that I knew that they did create, uh, as you know, those are wild foxes. Uh, you know that uh, foxes are believed to be uh, strongly correlated to dogs, right? Yeah. Okay. So they domesticated it and they created a new breed in Russia. And oh, yeah. In recent years. So we have a, a different breed of foxes and we can show the process because they did it in the last, I cannot remember the number of years, but it's really recent, just uh, a handful of years. They 
start to breed those foxes and they are much more docile. Uh, they have bigger eyes and a smoother uh, line of the nose. So it's a different breed. We yeah. can show breeds uh, in becoming. It's a thing that you can do. And you can do even with dogs because we do have um, records of uh, dogs uh, that they are uh, selected to become a new breed. Well, the, I, I know this experiment, but all they really did was get the, the ears to go floppy and the tail to go curly. And you can basically turn anything into a pet. You can do the same thing with lions. Yeah, but if you will continue to do it, it's already different from a normal fox. I will well, not recognize a normal fox that I see in my field with that it's much more like a dog it's a different breed so if you are telling me that breeds are not correlated and it's impossible to get a new breed i will tell you that we can show that breed are indeed created we can show that they are related because that's, that's well that's the thing this experiment never showed morphological changes all it all it showed was years going down and that's no different than me holding my arm up and then holding my arm down. That's not a morphological change. It's a morphological change or not. Okay, were they just opening their eyes more or? No, no, they are bigger because when you domesticated an animal and we can see with dog too, usually these animals need to interact with humans more so. Uh, because because the more with bigger eyes are favorites because we can understand them better. If you look at the eyes, are much more expressive. Look at the eyes of a fox; you will not get much from them. Um, that's a that seems a bit inferential, not not really a scientific point. Well, if the eyes are bigger are bigger if well, that's, change well, shape it change shape well that's because they're opening their eyes more I, I can open my eyes more it doesn't mean i, I have, a have bigger eyes you have bigger eyes it's not that you are opening it more uh, those are morphological changes well it, you said it was a it was a, it was more expressive the way you become more expressive is by opening yeah, you your can eyes be more. more expressive bubble gum because you have bigger eyes well, if I do a facial expression with my face, I open up my eyes more. Yeah, you can open your eyes more, but if you are very little eyes, you will not be able to do it in the same way. If you look at a wolf, wolves are not very expressive because they are not meant to be. They well, that's because they're not interact a lot uh, with them, but with their species they interact in different ways with humans uh, eye contact is very important well that's because tell a lot about your dog or your cat looking at them well that's because they're playing all the time they're they're even expressive with it when they're playing around with themselves in in the wild but in, in the wild they don't have to they don't get time to play all the time sometimes sometimes they get a hunt sometimes they get a fight but when you're in captivity you it, it it's all fun and games. You can play with uh, a wolf too. We have uh, people uh, domesticating wolves too. It's very hard because they are very aggressive uh, compared to a normal dog, but you can have uh, a wolf. And I've seen uh, wolves in captivity. It's not just an expression. The morphology is changed from a dog to uh, a wolf and those uh, foxes are a little bit different and we are talking about things that they change in a very small window of time but, but so the small but, that we can basically record it but again those quote unquote morphological changes like the floppy floppy ears and curly tails that's just that's just akin to holding your hand up and holding your hand down. That's not really a morphological change you would see from like, um, you know, teacup poodles and a regular poodle. 
<laughs> Sorry, uh, can you repeat? Uh, okay. When I'm talking about morphological chains, I'm not talking about just you know holding your hand up and holding your hand down, holding your ears up and holding your hear ears down. I'm talking something like a, a teacup poodle versus a standard poodle. That would be morphological change. Yeah, if your uh, bone structure changed to uh, change your appearance, like in that fox, the, the nose, it was not the most the um, the skull was a little bit different. So we have a uh, morphological change. It's not that we cannot show morphological changes. I can tell you that I've seen morphological changes. Of course, my uh, high school years were uh, all about um, things like uh, plants, uh, insects, uh, a lot uh, and things like that because when you study agriculture a little bit uh, even with uh, of course breeds of uh, cattle and things like that and we can uh, show changes in cattle too uh, for example uh, they can change uh, I will not say rapidly but Absolutely, you can uh, observe uh, improvement in well, human times. That's the thing. When, when we do get to see, at least, for example, in, in this fox, the curly mm -hmm. tail, uh, that's that's something you can do with pugs as well, make, make it to curlier. But if you have a curly tail, uh, why the tail is different? You think that, that that's the animal? keeping the tail like that, or there is a difference inside the tail? No, when we, when, I was gonna say, when we do, when we get this curly tail, we make it more curlier, all we do find out what this actually does to the animal is give it scoliosis. So it, it just, it gives it a, it gives it a disease. So if, if we just keep promoting and keep promoting this curly tail, ultimately you're gonna get a dysfunction on it. A dysfunctional dog. Can you give me a source for that? Uh, that um, is made, made uh, the animal sick. Uh, uh, it it of it course, uh, breeding can ca cause uh, problems to the animal, and there is a simple reason for that. Uh, yeah, and breeding. The reason but... is we are selecting what we like about the animal, but not what the animal need to survive, of course. It's not that easy uh, to apply that's... those kind of rules, but you were telling me that we do not see changes uh, morphologi morphologically, but we do. But that's the thing. If when... we can change the skeletal uh, or muscular structure of an animal, that's a morphological change. It's not like you can tell me that just an expression because uh, a cattle may breed for uh, milk it's very different from a cow breed for um, meat well, no, and the, we the, can here. have difference because you can also get uh, hybrids and that's quite an interesting thing if yes. well, here, uh, here's the thing oh, again, again feedback Okay, is the echo gone? No, I'm seeing an echo. Sorry? Oh, I'm getting an echo from my... Okay, the echo is gone. So, well, here's the problem with your examples of morphology. Because you're, 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 you're attributing deformity to morphology. We can, we can see uh, people become deformed, and you can say that's quote-unquote morphology. But no, no, rational, <laughs> no rational thinking would conclude that's the kind of morphology of the, the kind of morphology we're talking about. And so you can see, for example, in the German Shepherd, it there were more for morphology to make it a bit taller, but in actuality, this was a deformity. And so it, it gave the dog it gave the dog um, a spinal um, uh, some some sort of I forget the word for it, but it's some sort of spine deformity. It didn't it didn't make any good. 
And and so there's really no difference between our 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 artificial selection that's that somehow more there's some sort of magical difference between that and natural selection. If nature did the same thing to this uh, German Shepherd, the conclusion would be the same: uh, some sort of spine disease. Okay, so uh, you have a source for that, and if you want to share, yeah, I, I can get the I can get the German Shepherd okay. thing, but uh, it's it's gonna be a while because I didn't I didn't bring it with me. <laughs> Please uh, take your time. Uh, you can talk for the meantime, and then uh, while well, I look it up. Sorry. Oh, uh, you, you can make some points. Oh. Uh, while well, well, I look this up. Yes, uh, what I'm telling is that we can actually see morphological changes in those animals and we can see those in your, our lifetimes. I'm very interested in that. If you do have uh, any experience about breeding, uh, if you have, you have ever been in a farm uh, or uh, things like that if you are you have ever discussed uh, these kind of things with farmers and people inside that uh, enterprise uh, in that field uh, sorry no i'm not a dog breeder myself i don't i don't like dogs but they're a good um, the reason i use dogs is because we have a well we have a well-written history about them. I mean, they've been with humans as long as those humans have been along, from my position. And if we, we have a good record of them, his, historically. Not, not, not so much with, you know, like ducks. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so what kind of uh, experience do you have? Uh, with uh, breeding? None. None whatsoever. <laughs> Okay, uh, it's quite important because I do have some, uh, as you know, I'm a chemist, uh, chemist of course, uh, but uh, I uh, did went into uh, high school, a spe uh, specialized with uh, uh, agriculture and uh, breedings, uh, basically zootechnic, uh, so the science on how you do breed the animals and how do you uh, grow them, uh, make them profitable and things like that. Yeah, designer dogs. Well, for example, uh, what's it called? I think it's called a teacup poodle. Or, uh, well, you know, you know the teacup poodle, right? No, what's that? Uh, it's like a really, really tiny poodle. It's like the size of a, a teacup. Okay, uh, you can show it to me if you want. Uh, I'm still looking for that German Shepherd okay. one. Uh, so mm, that's the... Those are my points. Uh, for what I can understand, uh, what I can uh, even tell you from direct uh, experience, breeds are a thing. We can show uh, difference uh, between those animals in real life. Uh, basically, you can do hybrids, uh, and those are quite tricky to explain from a creation uh, point of view uh, and i cannot see your point sending uh, actually uh, you are telling me that uh, dna tests are not uh, a thing basically they no nothing uh, and say that's agree quite a lot but even if we do not take those into account, we can see uh, animals and organisms, plants are much simpler to uh, show those kind of things. No. You can grafting, uh, plants mutate uh, more, they can 
just look at wheat. Uh, it's a very interesting. Uh, no. no, no, no. I'm saying the DNA test shows there is no intermediate. It's it's. Oh, get a phone call. Give me a second. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. I put the video. Skip to four thirty. Okay. Uh, okay. Video. Okay. Se vuoi vendere online, devi fare. Oh, but it's so people can see it. What I mean. Okay, you were telling me uh, what point of the video? Four minutes and thirty seconds. Okay. Okay, sure. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I mute myself. Uh, Before, to fit modern standards, the German Shepherd was considered to be a medium-sized dog with strong legs, a deep chest, and straight back. It was used to herd and guard sheep. Over time, a growing demand emerged for the breed to become larger and more imposing in appearance. Genetic alteration aimed to provide a solution, but this came at a cost to the dog's health. Today, the German Shepherd is much heavier, and features a back that slopes drastically, making them prone to hip dysplasia, a condition where the leg bones don't fit properly into the hip socket. At some point, these dogs could jump over an eight-foot wall, but today's German Shepherds are no longer the athletic breed they used to be. They are instead too big for their own good. Lack of physical exercise within a domesticated setting is also a cause for concern. Number six, the Basset Hound. Basset hounds have always That's had all. ears and short yeah, legs, but after displaying... So, yeah, so like the morphological changes you're, you're appealing, to, appealing to, I would say those are um, deformations. Because there there is no difference if we do this mutation and if Mother Nature does this mutation. It's, it's still the same result. First of all, uh, it's not like uh, I can understand with GMOs where... Uh, I did a uh, GMO uh, back in my days. Uh, it was an nematode. But when you are talking about breeding, of course, we are selecting uh, the traits we like, but the mechanism, it's natural. It's not like we are intervening in the me mechanism. We are just selecting what we want. In nature, those dogs will die i think or uh, fare a less better than other drug dog breeds so they won't be selected but that's we the thing like if we dogs, we selected them and we caused them problems but if those dogs have problems it's because we do have a morphological change well, and that change is harmful to the dog but it's still change. You're showing that your point is not sending because that's morphological change. Well, this you're, you're calling it morphological change, but I would say there's just deformation and you're simply attributing this to morphological change. And that's that's like saying if if all if all the evidence for evolution is devolution and that's all you're gonna keep presenting, then that that that's com that's com completely contrary to the point you're trying to make. Mm -hmm. It's because, it, let, let's say, hypothetically, because these dogs, or if, if, if this dog wants to evolve to get bigger, to eat bigger prey, or fight off bigger animals, it still has to go through these same mutations, even in nature, and it will still have the same effects. 
uh, Titan Uranus is bringing up a good point, uh, actually. So uh, you are telling me that's devolution, but it's still morphological change. Uh, evolution is not looking at good or bad. The only thing that matters is the how much uh, an animal is fit to survive. If you are looking into um, nature, of course, the animal that will uh, not survive because you can still survive and not be su success successful. Sorry, because if you cannot reproduce as fast as other dogs, you will not uh, be su uh, su uh, sorry, successful. Uh, well, so it's not like you need to die to not be selected. Well, no, none of this, no, no, none of this change is taking uh, this German Shepherd breed to another breed. This is just getting like a German Shepherd with Down syndrome. No, nobody in the human race would say just because this child has Down syndrome that they are morphologically changing into a, a new uh, breed of human species or a new a new race of human. They would say no. That, that that's still that human but it's just uh deformed nobody's saying that's a new species or a new breed of a race of human and same but upon that breed is quite uh stable uh, it's not like when you have a deformation it's uh, a sickness those uh, dogs have a morphological change that can lead in their uh, older ages to problems but it's not like they are sick when they are young they are perfectly fine well, that's the thing. it does lead to sickness any the morphological changes that do happen that we do observe all lead to sicknesses i do uh, agree with the titan arms on that but what i can i'm trying to make you understand first of all those are uh, morphological changes you can call it devolution, but it's still evolution. But that, uh, also, that's, that's a point. we are causing it. We are damaging the dog doing that. And well, you well, can uh, say that's not really a good thing, and I would agree. But it's still change, it's still evolution. Well, if, it's not like we cannot observe good changes because you can increase uh, muscle mass and things like that. We have dogs with massive. Uh, well, I, I feel like you're that well, can basically uh, take you in place and keep you there. Well, I we feel have created very strong breed of dogs. So it's not like it's all bad and we cannot have any change we do have a change you have even show it to me so uh well here's some the thing. Of these changes are bad for the dog but they are still changes well here i think you're employing double think here you ever heard of the 1984's double think uh, freedom is freedom is uh slavery is freedom peace is war Evolution, devolution is evolution. So you're you're employing double think here. So so you're saying ad, uh, subtraction is addition, and in uh, the points you're making for evolutions or counter to evolution, and uh, I mean, are you are you not seeing that? Sorry, what are you sub subtracting to the dog? It's not like it. No, are disappearing. No, I'm they saying you have a, a different shape, and that shape can lead to problem. It at their old older age. No, I'm saying so you're 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 it's not like something is missing. No, I'm you saying you're empl you're employing double think. Uh, do, do you know the, the the term double think? Yes, but I'm telling you, uh, you are calling a uh, change devolution, but uh, no, that's a term that you are using, but. Evolution do not care if a change is good or bad. In uh, uh, nature, uh, natural selection will uh, get you to a more fit animal, of course. Well, because no. If, if you cannot uh, reproduce, 
uh, at the same rate, you will not pass down your genes as well. No, as, as if, all, if all, I mean, if all the if all the points you're making are contrary to the actual point you're trying to make, <laughs> that's double think and it's counter to your argument. So you can't use counter counter facts to prove your fact, and so that's what's happening here. I, sorry, I'm not. I'm just telling you that what you are calling devolution, it's not devolution. Well, that's the thing. This, the, if it if it causes disease, if it causes a uh, a decrease in functionality, that that would be devolution by our term. Simply simply redefining devolution as evolution is contrary to the, the, the point of uh, Darwinian evolution as a theory. You can show me where uh, Darwin or any other scientists, if you want, are talking Who? about the evolution, because you are applying that term. No, I'm, saying, you're, I'm saying you're using double think here. So when you say, when you're saying, when you're simply redefining devolution as evolution, that's no different than saying uh, slavery is freedom, just simply because I wish to redefine it that way. Yeah, and where you did pick that term devolution, because I do not recall uh, in any publication of Darwin, and let's be clear, Darwin is quite far behind right now. It's not like we are using the his ideas for evolution uh, anymore. It did provide the base mechanism, uh, basically natural selection, and we went way past that by well, this point. Well, well I'm, not, I'm not saying Darwin or any uh, modern biologist is going to use the term devolution. Of course they're not going to use the term devolution because that, that would be contrary to what the, the, the point, quote unquote, they're trying to make. So you can define uh, to me the evolution. I, I can define the evolution. It, there, there would be uh, anything that compromises the functionality of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the genome. Mm -hmm. So if you, if we have uh, an increase of fitness uh, in in uh, an animal, that's evolution. Well, that would depend on how you define fitness, because uh, evolution is defined fitness as the ability just to reproduce. And I would say, no, that doesn't follow, because... Okay. You... Give me an example of something that you will consider uh, a positive uh, indication of evolution. Uh, for example, let's say we started off with like a chihuahua, and that chihuahua got bigger and became like a German shepherd that would be evolution or, or just a, or just a bigger chihuahua you know like a that doesn't have a, a scoliosis but like okay a... uh i recall in a video of uh, aaron ra that they are trying to breed a um, breed of cattle that's basically double the size of uh normal cattle that's evolution well this, the thing with the cattle thing is they made him bigger, but the cattle can't move and now has a bunch of diseases. So you, you compromise the genome. No, 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 the cattle is fine. It's just bigger. Yeah, but it, it can it can it can hardly move. It's it's filled with disease. And again, it's going back to this uh redefining it's really not. I've seen a very big cattle and you can have an increase in size in cattle and well, yeah. What yeah, you, you, you can do with breeding because if you have uh, cattle that produce milk and yeah, you you can do that. With, I mean, you can you can turn a chihuahua bigger too, but you have to mix breed it. And, you, and the same thing with the cattle. Yeah, you, I ask it. Uh, I ask you for uh, an example, and uh, if I give you that example, you will say that's not the case. No, but because because the point is you're, you're missing that you're crossbreeding these animals. So I can make a chihuahua bigger too, but I have to use a German Shepherd to bring it up in size. And that's that's obfuscating the, the problem. You're... You will not need that. You just need to have a chihuahua and pick up 
from uh, their litter, the bigger one, and do that again, yes. and again, and, I, and again, and again, and you will get a bigger Chihuahua. Yes, that's that's what I want. Just yes, you, and you can. And that's the thing. You, you, that's the thing. You can't because we don't see bigger Chihuahuas. You can. I can we, assure you, it's we, what we, are, wait, we are wait. doing with breeds like wait, uh, we don't. Cattle. That's the thing. We, we, I we, observed a uh, cattle. Uh, 1.9 meters tall and that's not normal we that's are making bigger breeds if, if if you need one you can the you thing just need to uh choose uh wisely your um characteristic of uh the offspring you will select and yes you so, will increase in size so so if we just have like just 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 chihuahuas and keep selecting for the bigger and bigger one try to make bring it bring it up to size like that of a german shepherd we don't see that you can because that's the thing we don't see that yes we do because <laughs> what we are doing with chihuahua what was the process you were uh keeping uh and use those dogs to breed the smaller one you will have a litter, litter of dogs, and you will have the smaller one and the bigger ones. And you took the smaller one, and you repeat the process again and again. Eventually, you will get to something like the Chihuahua. If you do when the I, process in yeah, reverse, you can yeah, get to... Yeah, we, we, we did that with the teacup poodle, but with this... The, the process was just in reverse. It wasn't used. It wasn't just using purebred poodles. I'm telling they, you that you can. They, no, they, they mix. They mix. The breed, it's a, it, no, it's a it's mixed. Breed. It's a mixed breed. So they weren't just using poodles. They were mixing it with other animals to select for that. And you can. I can do that too. The problem is getting. It's going from pure breed, pure breed chihuahuas to like a. a the chihuahua is the size of a german shepherd that has never been observed I'm, I'm telling you you can because when you have things like freeze and cactal if you make uh, an hybrid you will get an hybrid and you know why hybrids cannot do what you are telling me because they are sterile they have problems because the uh, cattle is so different at this point that you basically have almost a different species of cattle well if we are that far well then, even if look let's use your example even if we do that and we, we would simply just make a mate for it using the same uh interbreeding process and hypothetically they should be able to inter interbreed since they're both within that new species but they can't because it, it it it's it's a matter of the entire genome being compromised, not, not a new species. The genome is compromised. It's not, it's not the birth of a new species. Sorry, can you explain why the genome is compromised? Uh, because, because those breeds are fine. They okay, are for breeding, example, they are reproducing, but if you do a knee breed, you will get problems. For example, uh, the lion and the tiger can have a, a, a mixed breed child, and what what we would say, and you, and you would say that's a new species, correct? No, but, a new but breed, it's not a new species. It's a different thing because they usually cannot reproduce. A new the, breed, the, the, it's a different thing. It's not a new species. You will not get species but, like that. It, but that's what's ha but that's what's happening in your cow example. It's the exact same thing. No. Okay, in your cow example, you're saying we mix these cows, and ev eventually we get this bigger cow, but it isn't able to um, interbreed that's any the longer. Thing. You will not mix the cows because if you do, we, you will get an hybrid, and with the hybrid, you cannot have offspring. So you need to use the same breed. And Definitely. you can increase the size of that breed. Let's give a very stupid example and a very recent one. Things like the Maramana cattle. And I did use that example in my debate with Kent. And you can get bigger ones. 
on that cattle. And we did. We got a structure that's bigger and better. Of course, better for the cow, uh, not for you if one of the cow got angry with you. But well, no, it's not. That's the thing. The cow. That's, that's the thing. It's not better for the cow. It, it, it limits its functionality. It can't even mate anymore. These cows can what? no longer. They can no Sorry, longer mate. They are fine. You know, no. marimana cattle are fine. Okay. Okay, no, they can't mate because they physically can't touch each other. So they have to use artificial insemination. Are the, you kidding me? They can do it just fine. I've no. seen it literally. Uh, are you talking about those big old buff cows? No. Okay, there, there's this breed of ultra big buff cows that we made, but they they physically can't have intercourse anymore. So you have to artificially inseminate them. Most of uh, cattle are inseminated, but in that case, Marimana cattle is a experiment to recreate aurochs. Oh, you're talking about the auroch? Yeah, yeah. Crossbreeding cows is fine. It's not crossbreeding. They did, you they, cannot crossbreed anything because you will get hybrids, and it does not work like that. Yeah, we're, they were trying to bring back the auroch, and they did yes. that through crossbreeding, quote unquote. You have any evidence in. for that? Yeah. Because if you do crossbreeding, you will get hybrids usually. Yeah, it, it, yeah. What kind trying. of cattle did they interbreed? Uh, I, I can look it up, but it's going to take a while again because I didn't bring that. Um, but yeah, they were trying to bring back the auroch, and they used multiple cows to try to replicate it. But it, it's not its not the original auroch, of course. Of course, it's not. It's impossible to get the original one because evolution does work. So we do not have the same genome. If, uh, as Ken said, evolution is not a thing, we would be able to recreate the auroch because the genome will be the same gonna take a while to find look this up again though because uh allegedly the auroch went extinct in around uh 1600s around there which uh yeah, which i remember 1600 or 1700 I yeah which... recall i can see in my presentation if you want which just begs the question that like every cow from the aura, because all cows are allegedly came from the auroch. So according to evolution, w with within the last four hundred years at least, uh, half or half of the breeds came from the were born within the last four hundred years. And so, I uh, see no no problem there. Where they're talking about evolution at at a at an extremely rapid rate, ridiculous. Uh, artificial Super. selection is more rapid, and there is a reason for it because we are actually selecting those traits. We are doing it. So when you are there selecting a certain trait and permit to reproduce just to increase that uh, characteristic, you will get a much more rapid uh, effect. Because in nature, it's not like that someone is actually there to select those, uh, uh, those cows. We are not doing it. If you are doing it, you will get better results because you can actually select what you want but the mechanism is the same in nature of course is uh slower because the selection is made through um process that they are not as precise as someone actually selecting uh, the cow you can get examples that are close to that because if you look to moth there is a, a very uh, powerful experiment on that. If they change color, of course, if the color is very um, useful to hide the moth, uh, you will get uh, a very strong selection on that. 
so you can have some cases of uh, rapid uh, selection, let's say that. But if you are doing it, of course, you will get better results. In nature, nothing is so simple, let's say that. Yeah, I'm having trouble finding it because uh, it's mm. it takes a while. First, first time we try to rest, try, try to because I have to like I have to sift through it. Mm -hmm. uh, don't worry about it. Uh, uh, it's not a debate. I'm not here to destroy your position. Uh, yes, of course I will oppose it, uh, and I think I'm doing. Uh, quite a good job, if I'm honest, but uh, I'm not here yeah. to oppose you. Uh, well, I mean, I'm yeah. grateful to for you to appear on my channel. It's a very small channel, so I'm very happy for uh, this video and this discussion. I want to be very honest with you. No, that's cool. No, no problem. Maybe we can do this another time because it's getting late and I have to do some stuff. Okay, don't worry about it. So I will say goodbye to you if you want to give me some uh, material, you can do it. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, if you want to have another discussion, uh, I will be quite <laughs> busy in the next uh, uh, weeks, but I will try to arrange something and I can say that you were uh, also kind to speak with me at this hour it was quite nice from you so have a nice day see ya later see ya so uh, if someone is looking uh, I can do an open mic. If someone want to show up, I will share the link uh, and we can speak a little uh, if someone want to jump in a minute to find the link and I will share. Okay. Good. <laughs> Comunque se vuoi salire ho messo il link in descrizione. Qua il, se vuoi parlare italiano puoi farlo. Tra un po' credo che chiuderò la diretta, però eh, se vuoi il puoi mettere anche un nome falso. Sorry, uh, it was a friend of mine. No one. I will close the live uh, shortly, shortly. So I will give my close uh, statement. I think that Bubblegum was quite... Um, nice to come here but i think that his ideas are quite hard to believe uh, let's say that so i think it's pretty confused uh, it's quite clear that he does not know uh, how to do a research uh, on scientific topic it's not his fault of course i would love to show him him how to do it. Uh, I usually use Google Scholar to do it uh, and other sites I will not cite here. So I know that someone is watching, uh, someone has some comments. Uh, I was quite grateful for the presence of Tanus Uranus. 
it was uh, quite uh, a good time looking at his uh, comments. I will try to get him a mod account as soon as I will get how to do it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, mm, I'm pretty new uh, to these things uh, actually. Someone? Okay, if no one wants to come here, I think I will close my uh, live and I wish you good day or evening. I do not know where you are. Uh, if you are uh, uh, from Italy, I know that some friends were there. Uh, buona serata ragazzi. And if you are from USA or Australia, places like that, I wish you good day uh, or good night. I do not know what your time zone is. I want to, I'm grateful for my friend showing up. Natalie, it was a pleasure. Titanus Anus. Uh, it was a pleasure too, and see you next time.